Hello, I'm Margaret. I'm a youth services librarian at Westport Library, and today I would like to read a passage from one of my favorite banned books, A Wrinkle in Time. And it was banned for opposing Christian beliefs. This will give a little bit away, but not too bad. Meg ran at the column. She felt as though she was going through something dark and cold. But she was through. Father, she cried, and she was in his arms. This was the moment which she had been waiting, not only since Mrs. Witch whisked them off on their journey, but during the long months and years before when the letters stopped coming, when people made remarks about Charles Wallace, when Mrs. Murray showed a rare flash of loneliness or grief. This was the moment that meant that now and forever, everything would be all right. As she pressed against her father, all was forgotten except joy. She was only, there was only peace and comfort of leaning against him, the wonder of his protecting circle of his arms, the feeling of complete reassurance and safety that his presence always gave her. Her voice broke on a happy sob. Oh, father, oh, father. Meg, he cried in glad surprise. Meg, what are you doing here? Where's your mother? Where are the boys? She looked out of the column, and there was Charles Wallace in the cell, an alien expression distorting his face. She turned back to her father. There was no more time for greeting, for joy, or explanations. We have to go to Charles Wallace, she said, her words tense quickly. Her father's hands were moving gropingly over her face, and she felt the touch of his strong, gentle fingers. She realized with a flooding horror that she could see him, that she could see Charles in the cell and Kelvin in the corridor, but her father could not see them, could not see her. She looked at him in a panic, but his eyes were the same steady blue that she remembered. She moved her hand brusquely across his line of vision, but he did not blink. Father, she cried, Father, can't you see me? His arms went around her again in a comforting, reassuring gesture. No, Meg. But Father, I can see you. Her voice trailed off, and suddenly she shoved Mrs. Who's glasses down her nose and peered over them. Immediately, she was in complete and utter darkness. She snatched them off her face and thrust them at her father. Here! His fingers closed about the spectacles. Darling, he said, I'm afraid your glasses won't help me. But they're Mrs. Who's, they aren't mine, she explained, not realizing that her words would sound like gibberish to him. Please try them. Just please, Father. She waited while she felt him fumbling in the dark. Can you see now? Can you see now, Father? Yes, he said. The wall is transparent now. How extraordinary. I could almost see the atoms rearranging. His voice had its old familiar sound of excitement and discovery. It was the way he sounded sometimes when he came home from his laboratory after a good day and began to tell his wife about his work. Then he cried out, Charles Wallace. Then, Meg, what's happened to him? What's wrong? That is Charles, isn't it? It has him, Father, she explained. He's gone into it. Father, we have to help him.